Hello, everyone. We are excited to get started. Uh, I wanted to take the honor and the pleasure of introducing everyone to the first inaugural uh, binational summit for the restoration of Laguna Salada and the Salton Sea. Uh, we're really bringing this topic forward because we want to elevate the importance of Laguna Salada as a viable lake bed, as a low cost alternative to um, bringing water to the Salton Sea but also to add that advantage and that benefit to Mexico as well. Uh, we see the Laguna Salada estuary as a viable habitat that could be built fairly quickly. Uh, and wanna just kind of give the speakers that are gonna be presenting over the next few days, an opportunity to share their technology, share their insight, share their um, experience as it relates to the Salton Sea, but the ubiquitous uh, nature of their technology can be applied anywhere. And so um, I'd like to introduce myself first in our team. My name is Nathan White. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ages Inc. Uh, my partner and co-founder also on the line here is Aaron Borja. Uh, we have several of our engineers and collaborating uh, uh, technology partners. We have Rob Simpson, who's our development director. We have Roger Arnold, who's our uh, scientific advisor and, and partner. We have uh, many people that aren't able to make this call today, but we're really sharing our message of uh, the opportunities and the solutions-based approach uh, behind um, projects like the Salton Sea. We've spent uh, the majority of our company's founding and to this day, the past eight years on Salton Sea-related policy, uh, politics, as well as a solutions-based approach to bring um, uh, economic opportunities to the region. So I'd like to just start uh, by giving uh, many thanks to all the people that have helped uh, throughout the many years. Uh, we're really at a tipping point as the video kind of eloquently described of the issues and the policy and projects on the ground not meeting the urgency of the issues that are, are taking place. Uh, I kind of briefly mentioned we're at that tipping point of the salinity level being uh, too toxic for the, the fish to survive which then has a negative impact on the birds that feed on them. Um, the Salton Sea is the Pacific flyway backbone. Um, so we have the gateway being shut down for, for birds in the North, Northwest and North America uh, continent. So it's, it's a really urgent time, uh, but there is a real urgent opportunity and there is a, a solution uh, that moves things forward and there is a collaboration effects between nonprofit agencies, between public and uh, private officials. We have an opportunity to bring all of those people to the table using science as the guiding principle. And so just overview before I get into the presentation, I just want to, you know, tell all those people out there that are suffering right now, it's difficult times. Uh, you know, COVID has shown uh, how fragile our uh, economy is, how fragile our, um, you know, healthcare system is. And I just want to say that, um, you know, we collectively can get through uh, urgent issues like this. We can build a new economy. We can build a green economy. We can build uh, environmental projects that actually have a return on investment. So that's why I founded this company is not only for our, our children and the, the future generations, but really for us to work together as a collaboration to not spend money in administration, right? The Salton Sea has shown us what administration policy gets us, which is studies and studies and studies, but not projects on the ground. So Ages Inc. is a professional project management team. Uh, we assemble the highest and best professionals in the region in our team, but we also work with outside other agencies and industrial partners, which you're gonna see in, in the next couple of days um, as technology uh, gurus and uh, really the the, brightest, best, and most agile professionals that can address any problem. So, you know, we're going to go over many different things and many different topics from water quality improvements, uh, ways and means to restore uh, the uh, Alamo River, the New River, the Salton Sea, but most importantly, ways and means to restore Laguna Salada 
as it is a sister sea and once was connected to the Salton Sea. We want to make that an urgent and viable solution and want to share the excitement behind it. So I makes to kick off this inaugural binational summit for Laguna Salada and the Salton Sea. I've said it so many times, it's a, it's like a second nature, but I'm really excited to have everybody here for those people that are tuning in on YouTube, Facebook, and those people that are gonna see this in the future. I'm excited to build uh, this green, green army, this team of uh, people that can come together and work together uh, for a solution-based approach to some of the hardest uh, issues that we face. Everything from, you know, uranium mines to the Alamo River to oil spills to toxic dust in the southwest of Southern California. We want to bring everybody to the table and share those exciting ideas. So let's get started. That was my introduction. Let me uh, share the nuts and bolts of the project that we've been working on for the past five years. A little bit of background. 2016, I introduced and requested that there be an RFI, RFP, RFQ for water import at a long range planning meeting. Uh, a year later, uh, the same request was made to the Natural Resources Agency and the Long Range Planning Committee. Um, and in 2018, they launched the RFI process. Ages Inc. and 10 other groups submitted uh, proposals. Since then, uh, we have continued to work on the project, refine it, address all the comments that we received from the state. And we're excited that hopefully um, they're gonna have another non-biased third-party agency doing reviews and accepting submittals in the next month. And we're developing our project and our partners, and we're really at that point that we're ready to start construction once we get funding for the environmental studies for the regional climate models, and we'll talk about that briefly. So let's jump right in. All right, so everybody can see here, we have a multifaceted approach. We're looking at Trace Lagunas uh, or the Three Seas Project. <clears throat> Trace Lagunas is really focused on the Salton Sea, Laguna Salada and the Sea of Cortez, uh, the Northern Gulf of California, <clears throat> which you see off here to the right. Um, the importance of that is that the Sea of Cortez is a endangered habitat in an estuary, and we want to ensure that that's protected and enhanced for all the species, including the new blue whales that were discovered there, but the vaquita and the totuava are vitally important to this region. We also want to ensure that there's um, a protected environment in the Colorado River Delta, that that can also be enhanced. And that's not a sea, but that's an equally as important estuary. Um, these are the teams that we're working with. And as you can see here, our summary of the Colorado River Basin climate mitigation and management strategy. We see, and our, our team has developed the hypothesis that when you can restore Laguna Salada and the Salton Sea, uh, along with the Sea of Cortez, we can actually add and influence and prolong and extend the North American monsoon cycles. So that's really the basis of our concept. Not only the Laguna Salada will re reduce cost of bringing water to the Salton Sea, because you don't need a pipeline across this 50 mile stretch, you also get the added benefit of habitat. You get the added benefit of recreation, economic opportunities, as well as renewable energy in the region. These are the teams that we've been working with. Uh, Alan Dennis with Engineeria Dennis has been our civil engineering partner working exclusively on the Laguna Salada, Sea of Cortez and Colorado River Delta region. Uh, we're doing schematic designs and he's gonna be presenting after us. Bring back the blue, we have uh, Dr. Andrea Neal and um, her partners um, that are working on waste to energy conversion, but also as a collaborative partner in the overall development of this project. And this is us, Ages Inc. These are our team members, as I mentioned here, myself, um, CEO and co-founder. Uh, Alan Dennis is a civil engineer with Engineering Dennis. We have Robert Simpson, who's gonna be talking briefly later on today. And then we have Richard White, um, who is our controller and um, will manage and um, coordinate all of the funding coming in. Restoration of the Delta. So we're looking at what could be the perimeter lake concept here on the left. Uh, the perimeter lake concept 
reduces the surface area of the salt and sea by some 50 to 60 percent, somewhere maybe up to 70 percent. So you have a negative of about 1 million acre feet of evaporation in water in the next 50 years. The alternative that you have is a full salt and sea that's completely restored to its historic shoreline, a full and restored Laguna Salada, and a full and wet region around both of these areas, including a restored uh, Colorado River Delta and the Sea of Cortez. And just briefly mentioning this, this is the hypothesis. This is our scientific backbone. And you'll have two different uh, regional climate modeling teams giving presentations um, tomorrow. Um, and Rob will talk about this briefly in Google Earth. We'll go over kind of some of the impacts. You know, many people are a little bit short-sighted when we look at about just the Salton Sea itself. Really, we're talking about a binational approach and a collaboration of bringing water in from the Sea of Cortez. But how does that benefit Mexico and how does that benefit the Southwest? We can have an influence area of six different states with the restoration of these regions by enhancing, prolonging, and lessening the severe impact of the North American monsoon in the summer months. As you can see, there's a lot of moisture in the region, uh, humidity and air pressure. We just have a couple of those bullet points, but all of this affects the Southwest and, and the area um, that this becomes the impetus for. More precipitation adds better soil in the region. We can, we can add carbon into the soil. We can create and stabilize the plants that are affected um, by um, climate change and water policy. Those are kind of equal. Water policy in the Southwest and in, in California itself, water transfer deals are equally as significant negative impacts on the water system itself and the water cycle than just the salt and sea receding. As you can see here, this is a very interesting graph that just focuses when is water coming into the Colorado River uh, and Colorado River Basin. And as you can see, most of the water that falls into that region happens during the summer months. Uh, you know, we did get a little bit of water recently um, into the Colorado River Basin, but a lot of that gets stopped by um, the mountains here in San Diego. Um, so a lot of that precipitation and and rainfall actually occurs here in San Diego and doesn't go over the mountain pass and down past uh, the Salton Sea, but some does. As you can see, there's a, there's a high point here, but really this is the high point that we're talking about. How can we enhance that? Um, as you can see, uh, lower sea surface temperatures, descending hot air. These are, these are some of the conditions. We're talking about global issues and global um, temperature and global wind patterns. How, how can we have a positive impact on that from a, a perspective of geoengineering, right? And, and not the geoengineering when we talk about cloud seeding, but actually adding precipitation. When we talk about the um, restoration efforts, we're gonna start with the Sea of Cortez. Obviously, this becomes the area of inflow. We have the highest tidal ranges in the world, bringing water into this Delta region and flowing back out. But when it flows back out, it has a higher salinity content. So when we restore the salt, uh, Laguna Salada and recirculate and blend water back around, that is dampened and reduced by um, lessening the salinity impact and putting it down into a more protected region. You can see how we can add more water in that region. It's currently dying right now due to uh, salinity buildup and the salt crust that happens in the Colorado River Delta. Uh, we're excited to have uh, um, the Sonoran Institute um, speak later tomorrow about some of these issues and the projects they're working on. And just overall, blanketly for any of the presenters, they're not specifically endorsing these projects. They're coming on and giving their uh, objective opinion and and talking about their work. So just wanted to let everybody know, you know, their involvement in the summit isn't uh, necessarily endorsement. These are some of the flows that occur. Water flows in, water can flow back out with no additional, um, no additional water flowing in and no energy needed because we have those high tidal ranges. We're looking at the potential of a salt sink within the Salton Sea as a, a passive way to um, 
take care of the salinity buildup. So we would build this or we would sh shorten or shrink this over time, but we can really define and reduce that with additional income that comes in at a later date. Um, maybe even uh, dissolve the salt sink by um, adding some desalinization technology. And we're working with some of those companies now. These are a great opportunity for habitat recreation and also, um, you know, water purification systems. We're going to hear from some of those teams tomorrow, but you can apply, um, you can apply plant species on land. You can also apply those in floating islands, as you can see attached to a barge, where you can purify, reduce, and extract selenium. You can actually monetize that by make, making organic fertilizer. And these are all opportunities to make the environment, the habitat, uh, better in Laguna Salada and the Salton Sea. This is an overall diagram of our flow. Uh, we can bring water within uh, seven miles of the US-Mexico border. And the overall cost of that is in the range of $500 million to do uh, a project of this scale. It might be upwards of 600 million, but we're still finalizing our budgets. Uh, but for a, a new sea and flooding an inland sea with no energy cost needed on an annual basis, that's a really good cost benefit analysis. And if we can add 500,000 acre feet to the Colorado River every year um, and 2.4 million acre feet to the Colorado River Basin annually, we have a really viable project. We have, we have something that uh, affects 30 million people. Uh, you have a pipeline that goes down to the Salton Sea. Again, another 500 million to $600 million to do this phase of it. Uh, dollars to cents, it's a pretty good investment. Um, just briefly, we'll talk about some of the renewable energy opportunities. Down, down south of the border, we have the opportunity for waste to energy conversion. Uh, we can basically take waste plastic and tires and make the biofuel or make the fuel that we'll need to um, fuel all of our dredges that are gonna dig these canals. So if you see a tire field, actually where we visited, there was a massive tire field here. You can build a facility that can uh, take, take those products and make them into viable uh, alternatives. Uh, we could do desalinization technology here and tie that into the pipeline that goes to Tijuana. We could do large solar arrays. We can develop a new wind farm on the west shores of Laguna Salada. But most importantly, and the global changing <laughs> paradigm shift is the green zones that we have on either side of Laguna Salada and the Salton Sea. These green zones are seawater farming, seawater agriculture, and those systems really are viable anywhere in the world. We're going to have uh, Christian um, give us a presentation uh, and talk specifically about seawater farms. But when we talk about the viability of not only seawater farming for food and biofuel and jet fuel, we also have the viability of making the food products and creating new habitat. So that becomes a really interesting opportunity on the west shores of Laguna Salada, on the west shore or the west side of the Salton Sea and the west side of El Centro. You know, these regions can be um, producing a massive amount of biofuel and uh, large habitat regions, but also add more to this evaporation. We might even be able to have an additional 1.2 million acre feet. So as we twist this over time, we might, we might need seawater farms on both sides uh, of those areas. So, you know, I'm really excited just to launch this event. I'm excited to share um, our concepts, and I'm really excited just to uh, turn this over to Rob. Um, I'm going to introduce you after we uh, answer a few questions and answers. Um, do you, anybody want to get started with a question? Horatio, did you see any there that you wanted to um, jump into real quick? No questions yet, Nathan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just as a an exciting opportunity, right? When we're when we're talking about projects, when we're talking about um, what's happened with coronavirus and unemployment rates and the ability to create renewable energy. This is a Mecca. And, and I say that everybody's aware of geothermal opportunities, but this is a Mecca of pumped hydroelectric storage opportunities uh, in the mountain ranges here. It's a Mecca for desalinization that's uh, more 
environmentally friendly than what we have in um, here in San Diego. Um, but you also have this hydroelectric power generation when this water is coming downhill. We have about two hundred negative two hundred and thirty five feet of drop from Laguna Salada to the Salton Sea, and that creates a lot of renewable energy in and of itself just to fill up the Salton Sea, and that becomes our economic generators. So we're breaking this down into parts. We can build north of the border at the Salton Sea. We can start that development. We can build that salt sink to start, you know, reducing salinity for the majority of the Salton Sea. And that will start to bring the salinity content down. We could build south of the border, Laguna Salada, Sea of Cortez, and the Delta as parallel but independent projects that start moving forward. Um, and the reason being is because when you cross the border, that permit is very difficult, but that would be yet a third parallel project. Crossing the border is happening at the same time, but that permit process is so much more prolonged that we would do those three permitting and entitlement and development projects simultaneously to get projects in the ground, to have a backup habitat for the birds um, in the Salton Sea here in Laguna Salada. Um, and we can start fixing the ecosystem impacts that are happening with the salinity rise of uh, flooded areas within uh, the Sea of Cortez. So I'm really excited. I'm, we're taking our collective project management team and putting our full efforts into Laguna Salada restoration and the Trace Lagunas efforts. But these are really systems that are ubiquitous to a global scale. We could build projects just like this in the Denikil Depression and other places around the world. And we can bring a collaborative approach to those projects because the proof of concept is here. We're developing a strategy that can be low cost, you know, in the range of plus or minus $1 billion for the primary infrastructure of Laguna Salada and the Salton Sea. Uh, you know, that compared to the 33 to $70 billion of inaction, uh, you, you're talking about 5% the cost of inaction, right? You're talking about the ability to restore fully the Salton Sea. And we really have to take a scientific approach. We need to get the regional climate models funded by our state or federal government or private investors to show that this project would have a positive benefit on the region and the Colorado River Basin. But we also need to show what the perimeter lake concept would have on that same system. So they're really in tandem. Right, the, the perimeter lake could have a devastating effect on the Colorado River Basin because we're losing, uh, you know, 700,000 acre feet of evaporation water. The Salton Sea evaporates and, and goes into decline. And me personally, I wouldn't be boating in a perimeter lake. <laughs> you know, the only reason that anybody is going to visit and, and be in the Salton Sea again is if it's fully restored. So um, I'll kind of wrap that up there. Um, if we have any other questions that come in, drop those in the comments. Um, I'm really excited about this collection of professionals that we've been able to assemble. I'm really honored that we're including the tribal nations in this conversation. This project really started as my hope that we can have the tribal members and the property owners, such as the Kukapa tribe and the Torres Martinez, and the Kumeyaay Nation as part of this development, uh, because really this project is theirs. Uh, Laguna Salada was their ancestral fishing habitat and their fishing grounds, and they're really economically depressed. So this project becomes a template for how we create more opportunities for the First Nations. And um, I'm, I'm honored that they're gonna be joining our presentation and our conversation and, uh, on uh, Friday. We're also going to have a policy discussion. I'll put the agenda in the chat, um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get this going. It's really exciting. So, Rob, uh, if you're ready, um, we can. I'll stop sharing, and if you want to kind of share a little bit, uh, we can just jump in and Q and A when those things come in. Thank you so much. I'm really excited. This is our first inaugural binational summit of the Sea of Cortez and Laguna Salada restoration, as well as the Salton Sea. So it's a uh, really elevating the conversation.